uh -huh. being my enemies, wrongfully, or my. So I had many enemies, but what did I do? Then I restored that which I took not away. But I restored that which I took not away. And what he restored was your right, basically your opportunity to have right to the tree of life. That's what he restored. Let's find out and make sure that we're talking about Jesus. Because again, some of this could be applied today. Some of it could, but we know this could be applied to Jesus. Let's go to uh, the 20th verse. When you're there, you go ahead. Reproach have broken my heart, and I am full of heaviness. Uh -huh. And I looked for some to take pity, uh -huh. but there was none. And for comfort, but I found none. My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Verse 21. They gave me also gall for my meat, uh -huh. and in my thirst they gave me vinegar to drink. So this is the terrible... A picture of the terrible or foreshadowing of the horrific lynching, if you will, of Jesus. Crucifixion of Jesus. Let's go to 26, Matthew 26. Because he was obedient unto death because he, he loved the Father. He loved the Father. He is our example. And he was willing to do the will of God, even if it meant his life, because he loved him so. This is Matthew 26 and verse 31. This is the day of the Passover. And we want to start, I want to point out something here. This is the 31st verse. When you're there, you can go ahead. Then said Jesus unto them, uh -huh. All ye shall be offended because of me this night, uh -huh. for it is written, I will smite the shepherd, and the sheep of the flock shall be scattered abroad. So amongst his disciples, he tells them, All of you shall be offended because of me this night. It's going to get hot and heavy tonight, and you're going to be offended. And all of you are going to be scattered. Verse 32. But after I am risen again, I will go before you into Galilee. But after I am resurrected, I will visit you once again. And what did Peter have to say? Peter answered and said unto him, Though all men should be offended because of thee, yet will I never be offended. So he said, though all men shall be offended because of thee, yet will I never be offended. I love you. But see, we need to take heed to what happened to Peter because he failed in this instance. He rejected God because of what he was confronted with. He was afraid. He had fear. We must not have fear when the times get heavy. When the times get rough, when we are faced with persecution and even death, our love of God must prevail. So I said, Peter answered and said unto him, Though all men shall be offended because of thee, yet will I never be offended. He thought, he had in his mind for sure that he loved God and that he would never be offended. You have to know and understand and be assured that you will never turn away from God. What did Jesus tell him? Jesus said unto him, Verily I say unto you, that this night before the cock crow, thou shalt deny me thrice. Because he had fear. We must not fear. Even though times are approaching that are tumultuous, we must not have fear. We must let the love of God conquer all. So even if it means our death, even if it means imprisonment, we must exhibit the love for God and not deny him in any way. And this is an example of Peter. He recovered. But you have to understand that you may not have the chance to recover. So you have to constantly be working on this. See, we can get in a, in a stagnant state and think that we have arrived and think that we know everything. This man walked with God, saw him do God in the flesh, saw him do miracles. And he loved him, but yet he feared. That's just what I want to point out, that we must take heed to this. And that we must love and exhibit our love for God, always. So it said, Jesus said unto him, Verily I say unto thee this night, before the cock crow, thou shalt deny me thrice. What did Peter say? Peter said unto him, Though I should die with thee. He thought he was ready to die with him. Go ahead. Yet will I not deny thee. Likewise also said all the disciples. So we must take, again, take heed to the warning today. That you must know, that you know that you know, that your love for God will prevail. And your love is exhibited, we're going to find out, through obedience. So it said, Peter said unto them, though I should die with thee, yet will I not deny thee. And all of them said it, and yet all of them were scattered. 
So my warning is don't be scattered. Verse 36. Then cometh Jesus with them into a place called Gethsemane and said unto the disciples, Sit ye here where I go and pray yonder. So the, the example that we should follow is not the disciples at that point, but rather the example of Jesus. So he goes and he prays. Verse 37. And he took with him Peter and the two sons of Zebedee and began to be sorrowful and very heavy. Uh -huh. Then said he unto them, My soul is exceedingly sorrowful, even unto death. Tear ye here and watch with me. So he knew he was going to die and that he was exceeding sorrowful. He was sad. He was acquainted with grief because he knew his time was at hand. And what did he do? Did he turn? Was he scattered away from the mission? Or did he turn from the mission that he had? Verse 39. And he went a little further and fell on his face and prayed, saying. He prayed for strength. What did he say? Oh, my father, if it be possible, let this cup pass from me. He didn't want to die. This expression of love that he, that he expressed, this exhibition of love that he expressed, he didn't want to do it. But he said, oh, my father, if it be possible, let this cup pass from me. He understood the horrific death he was going to have to die for you. He said, nevertheless, Nevertheless, not as I will, but as I will. And that's the example that we should follow. Because he was willing to suffer. Willing to do what he had to do because of his love for God. He must have that same type of love. Verse 40. And he cometh unto the disciples and findeth them asleep. Uh -huh. And saith unto Peter, What? Could you not watch with me one hour? Watch and pray that ye enter not into temptation. Uh -huh. The spirit indeed is willing. But what about that flesh? flesh? Weak. That flesh is weak. The flesh is what will cause you to subvert your love for God. He said, watch and pray that ye enter not into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. Verse 42. He went away again the second time and prayed, saying, uh -huh. Oh, my father, if this cup may not pass away from me, except I drink it. That will be done. And you can read in another place where it says his sweat dropped down like blood. He was troubled at this. And who wouldn't be troubled at this if you have to die such a horrific death? But again, it was his love that allowed him to do it. And it was the love of the father that would sacrifice his son. So it says, and he went away again the second time and prayed, Oh, my father, this cup may not pass away from me except I drink it. Thy will be done. Verse 43. And he came and found them asleep again, for their eyes were heavy. Uh -huh. And he left them and went away again and prayed the third time, saying the same word. Three times he prayed this prayer, and he was stripped. Go ahead. Then coming he to his disciples and said unto them, Sleep on now and take your rest. Behold, the hour is at hand, and the Son of Man is betrayed into the hand of sinners. Rise and let us be gone. Behold, he is at hand that doth betray me. So he was ready to do what he had to do. He is our example. He is our example. Let's go to John, the 17th chapter. He is our example. He walked this earth as we should walk. Totally obedient to the Father. And you are you're obedient to God when you keep his commands. When you do his will. This is John 17 chapter. Let's pick up something else here. In verse 1. Let's read the words of this intercession. That Jesus meant. When you're there go ahead. Verse 1. John 17 and 1. These words spake Jesus and lifted up his eyes to heaven and said. Father the hour is come. Glorify thy son that is thy son also may glorify thee. So prior to his death. He said, Father, the hours come, glorify thy son, that thy son may also glorify thee. Go ahead. As thou hast given him power over all flesh, uh -huh. that he should give eternal life to as many as thou hast given him. So he's going, he says, as thou hast given him power over all flesh, that he should give eternal life, or life eternal to as many as thou hast given him. Verse 3. And this is life eternal, that they might know thee, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom thou hast sent. And that's how we know the Father through the Son. He said, and this is life eternal, that thou might know thee, the only true God. You may look up and have faith and believe in God, in Jesus, and Jesus Christ, whom thou hast sent. Go ahead. I have glorified thee on the earth. I have finished the work which thou gavest me to do. In his, in his intercession, you see his testimony. 
His testimony was that he said he had, he's glorified him on the earth. And he's finished the work which thou, he said, which thou has given, gave us me to do. We have work to do. We have work to do as well. We want to have the same type of testimony that when it's all said and done, we've done the work that God has given us to do. That we've been obedient to his laws, statutes, and commandments. That's what we want. The same thing that Jesus did, the way in which he walked, we want to walk the same way. Let's go to 1 John. Because he was obedient unto, unto him unto death. And let's find out. Let's find out. All those that are of God. What they do. 1 John 5. Because Jesus died and became the first begotten of the dead. And was a true, became the true son of God. 1 John 5 and 1. 1 John 5 and 1. And when you're there, go ahead. Whosoever believeth that Jesus is the Christ is born of God. Okay, that, go ahead. And everyone that loveth him, that begotten, loveth him also, that is begotten of him. Okay, so it says, whosoever believeth that Jesus is the Christ is born of God. So you a type of son. And everyone that loveth him, that begat, loveth him also, that is begotten of him. Go ahead, verse 2. By this we know that we love the children of God. So we love our fellow with the children of God. How? When we love God and keep his commandments. When we love God and keep his commandments. Verse 3. For this is the love of God. For this is the love of God. How do we exhibit love of God? See, the Father exhibited love to us by sacrificing his son. Jesus exhibited his love by enduring that sacrifice. And how do we exhibit our love? That we keep his commandments. That we keep his commandments and his commandments are what? And his commandments are not grievous. His commandments are not grievous. Turn over real quick to Matthew 11. Matthew the 11th chapter. His commandments are not grievous. This is not something that you should not do. Matthew 11. Matthew 11. And verse 28. When you're there, you can go ahead. Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden and I will give you rest. So this is Jesus. He's saying, come unto me, all ye that are labor, that are laboring, are heavy laden. Laboring with being in bondage and a slave to sin. Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden. You are heavy laden because you're carrying the consequences of your sin. And he's going to do what? I will give you rest. You come to me, I'll give you rest. 29. Take my yoke upon you. Uh -huh. Learn of me. For I am meek and lowly in heart. Uh -huh. And you shall find rest unto your soul. So you will submit to my laws, my statutes, my commandments. You will have rest unto your soul. What about his yoke? For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Because if you take this yoke, he said my yoke is easy, my burden is light. It will make your life better and then you will have life eternal. But yet you will continue to be a slave to sin and in bondage to sin. You're going to bear the consequences in this life, and then in the life to come, you're going to burn in the lake of fire. So that's why he said, my yoke is easy compared to that, and my burden is light. Let's go to uh, John the 15th chapter. John the 15th chapter. Did we finish first, first John? No. All right, let's go back to first John. First. Thank you. First John 5. So in verse 3 it says, For this is the love of God that we keep his commandments, and his commandments are not grievous. Verse 4. For whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world. Uh -huh. And this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. Verse 5. Who is he that overcometh the world? But he that believeth that Jesus is the Son of God. So if you, if you are born of God, you're going to overcome the world. And the way in which you do this is your belief that Jesus is the Son of God. And if you do that, you will become a son. Now let's go back to uh, John. John the 15th chapter. John the 15th chapter. Because he is an example. John 15 and verse 9. 
As the Father hath loved me, uh -huh. so have I loved you. Uh -huh. Continue ye in my love. So as a disciple of him, as a follower of Christ, you are to love like he loved. So he said, as the Father hath loved him, so you are to love. He said, continue in that love. Verse 10, everybody has something to do in this relationship between the Father and the Son and us. He says, as the Father hath loved me, so have I loved you. Continue ye in my love. Verse 10. If you keep my command, uh -huh. you shall abide in my love. And that's how you abide in the love of God. If you keep my commandments, you shall abide in my love. Go ahead. Even as I have kept my father's commandments. He is an example. Even as he has kept his father's commandments, even unto death. Go ahead. And abide in his love. And abide in his love. Let's go to 2 Corinthians. 2 Corinthians, the 5th chapter. Because after such a love is exhibited to you again, you should feel obliged. You should feel convicted to show reciprocity, to show love back. 2 Corinthians 5 and verse 14. 2 Corinthians 5 and verse 14. When you're there, you'll go, you can go ahead. For the love of Christ constraineth us. It's the love of Christ that constraineth us. That keeps us from doing what the flesh would want to do. It constrains us, go ahead. Because we thus judge uh -huh. that if one died for all, then we're all dead. That we are constrained because this one, he died for us. And because it shows us that if he died, then we were all dead. We were all in the state of death. We were all headed towards death, that second death. It says, the love of Christ constrained us because we thus judge that if one died for all, then we're all dead. All the sin that comes short of the glory of God. Verse 15. And that he died for all. Uh -huh. That they which live should not henceforth live unto themselves. So now that he died for you, you show reciprocity. It says and that he died for all that they which live should not henceforth live unto themselves. It's not about you. Go ahead. But unto him which died for them. It's about living for God now. Go ahead. And rose again. 16. Wherefore henceforth know we no man after the flesh. Uh -huh. Yea, though we have known Christ after the flesh, yet now henceforth know we him no more. You agree. Therefore if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. So now you're a type of new creature now. A new creature. First, keep reading. Old things are passed away. Old things are passed away. That old man and that old woman is passed away. It said, therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. The old way of sin, the old way that led to death, is passed away now. Go ahead. Behold, all things are become new. All things are new now. Verse 18. And all things are of God, uh -huh. who have reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ. And this is how we have reconciliation. Back to God and it's through his son, Jesus Christ. This is love. Keep reading. And has given to us the ministry of reconciliation. So that was their ministry, the ministry of reconciliation. Because they said in verse 11, he said, Knowing therefore the terror of the Lord, we persuade me, we are made manifest unto God. They were trying to convince because they had fear of God. They also have love of God. And that was their ministry. Look what God has done for you. Now you need to do what you need to do. To show reciprocity. And live for God. And love God. Keep his laws and statutes and commandments. That, that was the essence of their ministry. Did you finish 19? Verse 19. To wit that God was in Christ, uh -huh. reconciling the world unto himself, uh -huh. not imputing their trespasses unto them, and hath committed unto us the word of reconciliation. Again, to be reconciled, to not have to bear the wage of your sin. That is love. That is love. Let's go to Romans 6. Romans 6. Romans 6 and verse 1. When you're there, you can go ahead. What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? God forbid. So how could you continue in, in sin after the Lord has showed you his grace? The grace was that he gave a sacrifice. It all started with his love. He said, what shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? He said, God forbid. Go ahead. How shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein? How can you, after he showed you such love, could you continue to live in sin? Could you can, That you can continue to do the deeds and the desires of your flesh. 
Said, God forbid, how shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein? Verse 3. Know ye not 